A very warm welcome to Oxpoon, the technical magazine with Wolfgang Rudolf. Hello and welcome. Today you have caught me cleaning. I would like to make a bright appearance, but I would also like to talk about shininess. I came over this theme by accident and then thought to myself, what is it then, this shining? And why does it shine? And where does it come from? We know it from the slang, a shiny appearance. He passed his test with a shiny appearance. Everything is glossy. Shining is positive in our everyday language. But what is shining? And how do we get gloss? And that is, well, a bit difficult, you could say. The more light what shines onto a product, and the more it is reflected, so high is the shininess. That's a little roughly expressed. How is light reflected? By having a very smooth surface. If I have a not smooth surface, like this leather, <coughs> I always use this to lay underneath things I am working on to protect them. So this leather has a pretty rough surface. And when I shine onto it, it becomes light. But glossy, it is not. But when I do the opposite, on this note block, there it is, also light, but still not glossy. Here, it looks like for our eyes, exactly the same lightness. But I want to prove to you later, that it shines. And naturally, if I shine onto my mirror, that shines very extremely. But if I shine from the side, it isn't as strong as shininess. You could say, gloss is the result of a smooth surface and the ratio between the beamed light and the reflected light. That depends on the light itself. That depends on the angle with which the light is emitted. There are also objects, and when I look at them vertically, they don't shine. But when I turn them a little to the side, all of a sudden, they shine. And also to this, everyone sees glossy differently. The way we see it is totally different to each other in respect to the gloss. Even with the colors, we have the same problem, in that we see colors differently to each other. And with gl gloss, it is exactly the same. Gloss is very hard to capture, but still we want to have gloss because it is positively assigned. A new car has to shine, or you would probably say, man, what is that for an old car? There we have again, old doesn't shine. Blunt, exactly the same with high glass photos. High gloss products, previously the floorboards were polished, so that they would shine, you could slip on them, but the main thing was that it looked good. Print products are exactly the same. Like this here, it is glossy. So I have here a glossy book, depending on how I hold it, you can see there is a proper gloss on it. Not only the content shine in this book. So gloss is hard to capture. Something which we can't catch properly, but we want to evaluate. Because the lacquer on our cars has to be always the same. We want to have our print products all identical. What do we do? Purely visual, we don't succeed. Because everyone looks different, thinks different every day, we have different lighting, different angles, so we need devices for this. And how you measure gloss with them is very simple. Shine with a light onto an object to be measured, and measure the reflection. And that is measured in GUs, gloss units. And that are values which we have randomly adopted, in which we have a reference class, It's a quartz glass, a dark glass, we know what the reflection factor in a certain angle is, and these devices are calibrated before every measurement. 
Then it has shown when you measure something else, the results. But when the value is 60 degrees normally, but when the value by 60 degrees is too small, then we increase the angle to 80 degrees. If it is too high, we reduce it to 20 degrees. Mostly, the 60 degrees is enough. For simple measuring devices, highly complicated measuring devices, simple to use, but in a way simple in the hand. They are okay with 60 degrees. Others measure three angles, but just for the safety, there's also in the printing area, 45 and 75 degrees. They are normally not there. How you can measure in the practice gloss reproducing recognizable for quality control, I would like to show you now. The PCE GM100, a gloss meter, and that's what I have here in my hands. It looks pretty insignificant, and when we turn it on, first of all it does the calibration. You have to confirm it, it takes a little time, and then it says OK. What has happened? Well, a device has with this gloss reference part in here, It is a glass with defined reflex diodes in here. There are here at the top. 20 degrees for example should have 92 GU, 60 degrees 94 GU and 85 degrees 99 GU. And the device knows that and adjusts itself internally. Here at the bottom, when we look inside, we can see the emitters to send light out and the receivers in the different angles so that we can measure in different angles so that the device and now to the operation it is very simple I take my note block put my device onto it press the top button it takes about a second or even less and we can read the values Two double point is for the 20 degrees, we have 0.5 GU, at 60 degrees 3.5 GU, and by 85 degrees 3.6 GU. So for a matte paper, that is right. But I'd like to do something so you can see that the repeatability very accurate is. The same piece of paper, the same measurement, and as you can see, nearly identical. We have here in the studio bad conditions, but it is important that these devices always give the same results. What our eyes and so cannot. The same paper in the original packaging, I will now measure again. And if you have remembered the old values, you can see here, it is totally different. Very high are the values now. The GU values, that means, this packing foil makes it glossy. That are naturally sales tricks, not only by paper, lots of other articles, when you buy sweets or presents, they are also packed like that, so that they shine. Let's see what a mirror does. A mirror is an extreme situation. When I go to here now, we come to the limits of this device, which is 200 GU, but you can see it actually shows higher. The mirror is the extreme situation. Used as a device naturally on technical devices or on vehicles. On lacquer, maybe in the home when you have used lacquer, or by print products. And I would like to show you that here, now when I go on to the product catalogue, then you can read the values and that is for the print is very important because they don't just print one book if you print ten or hundred thousands of them that all of them are identical not that one is shiny, the other matte naturally the colour has to fit but gloss, what we can't see ourselves these devices measure and are incorruptible.
The PCGM60, a gloss meter which is very small but has a lot in it. I press calibrate and then it calibrates itself. 97.0, it shows me. Have a look at this calibrate again. Here at the top is what the reflection degree is. So it has done it properly. Inside is the glass. When I wobble it, you can see the reflection. So now my device is ready. I only have to put it down on something, press once, and it measures at a fixed angle. It tells me now this product catalog has a reflection degree of GU 91.4. The measuring area of this device is enormous. It goes from 0 to 1999 points. And one more thing, I can't walk around testing my products, but I can also attach this device to my computer. And the software is delivered with it. So now I can attach it to the software. And now I have the possibility, as you can see, there are the measurements from before. I can now do a new measurement from the computer. I have the possibility to do more measurements simultaneously, to set the sequence and so forth. I can naturally, like before, measure by hand. This data is naturally sent to the computer. So and then it is simple for me to prove my products and test the different reference points. And see later, is that what I want? This device measures in the fixed angle of 60 degrees. That is what is usually used. And because it has a decimal point, it is very accurate. Even if the value is too low or too high, it can see the value. And how the GU is with this product. A very handy device. It is powered with batteries, had a connection cable and software is delivered with it. An interesting story, able to measure gloss. So now just to summarize, both devices are delivered in a sturdy case, so that nothing happens to them. They are highly sensitive devices, sensitive in that what they record, in reference to gloss, the PCE GM100 measures three angles simultaneously and shows them simultaneously. It is so universally applicable. And then we have one here which has a fixed 60 degrees. That is the PCE GM60. It can though be attached to a computer and be remote controlled. And the save data is not only on a computer save, but I can also save it on an Excel program and export it. Both devices are ideal for inspecting quality control because they're with our subjective attitude what shines. We can't go further, so we have the choice.